Howdy folks, Jeff Sangstack here. I want to talk about button transitions in Adobe Encore. A button transition is a little piece of video that plays after someone clicks on a button. And it essentially is a transition from the menu to the thing that you've linked to on that button. So for example, if someone clicks on this button, we'll play a little video that animates that button. And then let's say the menu then dissolves away and then that video that, that was linked to there will then start playing. It's a cool little feature and then I think it adds an, a little element of professionalism to your product. At least it makes it stand out from sort of basic standard uh, DVDs. So let me show you how to do that. First of all you need to make a menu. Uh, typically you can just grab a template and start that way and then you can just accept whatever the template is or you can adjust it to customize it for yourself. So I started with uh, a template called Data Highway Menu Wide and it looks like this and it has these little thumbnail buttons in it. And thumbnail buttons create little problems because uh, if you when you when you link up a, an item to the thumbnail it actually puts an image there and if you're going to try to animate uh, away from an image you need to have that image exactly looking like that in the video file that you need to make to make the transition and if that thing is a video button there's no way to uh, connect to some uh, timeout when the user clicks on the button at that moment when the video is playing and have that match the transition so working with uh, video buttons or thumbnail buttons like this just isn't really an option it's just too difficult to try to match it up so I didn't work with these buttons I replaced them so let me just delete that menu for now and show you what I did I just replaced them with uh, these graphic text buttons which I can just find by clicking on the button here and tracking down a button that works for this particular uh, menu background and I picked a, a, a menu uh, from the library that has a video background and the way you can spot menus with video backgrounds is that the little icon here on the left hand side has a folded over right hand upper right hand corner that means these guys have video backgrounds and I picked a video background on purpose because it just adds a certain extra element of complexity to it if you picked one with a static background that's also fine I just want to have a video background just to kind of jazz it up just a little bit so here's this uh, menu and what you need to do now is uh, save this as a Photoshop file well, every single menu in Encore is a Photoshop file. That's just how they're built, and which is one of the good things about working with uh, the Adobe Production Premium Suite is that these guys are all connected and work together nicely. And this particular is a Photoshop file which has a static background, but then you can always, the way it plays on the DVD is that this little video here plays, it, re it replaces the static background, and that video then plays in, uh, behind the whole scene here. That's how that guy works. So I'm going to export this thing as a Photoshop file, and then I'm going to save it under a new name in a place where I can access it. And to do that, you just make the menu active, make it forward by clicking somewhere in the menu. And then this little Photoshop button becomes active, where I can edit the menu in Photoshop. And then here it is in Photoshop. And all I need to do at this point is just save it. Just save it as something where I can then track it down later. Once I did that, I can close Photoshop and not worry about working with Photoshop anymore, so I'll just close it. And now what I need to do is take that Photoshop file and animate it. So I can animate it in any kind of uh, video editing of software or an animation software. So for instance, uh, in the production premium suite, we work with Premiere Pro for the video side and After Effects on the graphics animation side. So I'm gonna switch over to Premiere Pro where I've already imported that Photoshop file, but let me show you how that works. If you, open, if you just uh, import a file, and it's a Photoshop file, that's the one I just saved from Photoshop. When you import that, it asks you, do you want to merge the layers, or do you want to import it as individual layers or a sequence? And so a sequence is what you want. You want all the layers, all the visible layers. So I click on that, and all the layers that were turned off in the Photoshop file are turned off here, and I don't need the highlight, the so-called sub-picture highlight layers anyways. I just need the ones that are visible. And so those are the visible ones that are already checked off. And so I'm fine with the way that is. And then I click OK. Well, I'm going to cancel it now because I've already done that. And what happens is that you import all those layers and a sequence. If I open up the sequence, you'll see that it's a pretty hefty looking sequence. It has all those layers in it, plus it has the static background in it. Okay, so that's, how, that's what you start with. Now you can work with it on this basis or you can simplify your life because all I want to do is animate just this one button and I know that button is made up of three layers just these three here the uh, black background the white frame and the main video text those three layers are the ones that uh, I can turn off the other ones the ones that I want to work with so I can select just those three layers and make a, a sequence out of those three layers and then I can select all the rest of the layers and make a sequence out of them so I end up having two nested sequences the one on top here is just the button and the one on the bottom is everything else and then I can animate just the button 
and also animate the whole thing here separately. So I might, let's say, animate the button and then dissolve away the background. And one other little element here, I need to put video in the background. So let me go back to this guy. Right now, it's just a static background. I want to get the video in the background. If I go back to Encore, you can see that the video associated with the menu that I imported, it actually, it's a separate video file, and it's named based on the name inside the uh, library uh, stored where, wherever you uh, stored Encore. And if you can't really figure out what that is, all you got to do is right-click on this thing and say, uh, Reveal and Explore, or Reveal and Bridge, or where if you're on Mac, it'll be a little different, but you reveal at any rate. And there it's called NTSC Data Highway Menu. So I'm looking for under NTSC Data Highway Menu Wide. There it is. And it's an M2V file, an MPEG file with no, no audio associated, just video. And there, there it is. At least I know where it is. I can see it's inside the program files, Adobe, Encore, Library, Corporate, NTSC. That's how you can track it down. So I know where it's located. So back in Premiere, I need to find this guy. I can import it. So... I've already imported it here, but I'll just go import that particular guy, track it down by going to the you know the C drive and going to Adobe Encore and that kind of stuff and tracking it down and bringing it in. So now I've got that video. I take that video and I replace the background layer with that video. And as you can see, the video is about 30 seconds long, and I really don't need a 30 second transition. I need something less than that. But you know, ultimately, I'll just just shrink this guy down. And now, when I make the nested sequence, we'll have a five second group of uh, of stills and plus five seconds worth of that uh, background. All right, so now let's say I've, I've done all that work. Here's the uh, the, the collection of uh, layers um, with the video background, and then here's the, the the button on top. Let me turn that off so you can see that this the video playing there, like so. And we got this guy here. So now I want to just animate this button, for example, just to, just for grins. I mean, you can do anything you want to do, but in this particular case, I'm, I'm animate, animating that top button so it looks something like this when I play it. And then I fade away the rest of the uh, scene, like so. And so that's what we'll do for our little button animation. Uh, I've already saved this as a video file, so I'll just, uh, I just exported this as a as uh, an M M2V file to match the uh, MPEG-2 uh, output of the DVD, so that we don't need to worry about transcoding. So I've just exported this guy already. I go back to Encore, and in Encore I just need to import that particular file. So I go get that file. It's called Button Transition 1. You can make a different uh, video for each button, for example. So if you want to have a little button transition for this one, or this one, or this one, you can make three different videos for each button. And then now that I've got this, this button's already linked to something. If I go to the, the button properties, it's linked to this particular video over here. So it already has a link, but we need to add a transition to it. And to do that, you just click on the transition tab here inside the button properties. And right now it says it's, there's no transition to it. I just take that pick whip and drag it over to that newly added, newly imported video. And now it has a transition. Let me just show you how it works. I'm going to, I'll just preview this guy from here. And if I click on this button, it animates away. And then goes to the next, the linked clip. So that, folks, is how you add a button transition to your Encore DVD project.